It's a chilling witness to the misery they are willing to endure. The icebox on this small fishing boat served as a hiding place for asylum seekers, secretly on their way to Australia. They are locked up inside as police boats arrive, fishing nets piled on top of them. The captain has tried four times to take asylum seekers to Australia, every time he was arrested by Indonesian police, paying bribes to get out of prison. He says he received around $10,000 per trip. I have no fear. I heard that when we're arrested in Australia, we're being put in a fancy prison with good facilities and are being brought back home with a plane to Jakarta and then back here. He says the strategy of the smugglers is to take the asylum seekers to the closest point in Australia and pretend to be in danger. So Australian rescue boats will pick them up and take them to the immigration detention centre, where their status will be established. Most of the time they're crammed together here under the deck in total darkness. Only in the evenings they can come outside to take some fresh air. This is the closest departure point from Indonesia to Australia. It takes more than 72 hours to get there. And more and more fishermen are willing to take the risk to make the dangerous journey across. Al Jazeera managed to secretly film a group of asylum seekers from Afghanistan arriving at the airport in West Timor. They were brought to several guest houses before they left from the beach in total darkness the next evening, leaving behind a plastic bag from Dubai airport and some clothes. This is the man who arranged their trip. He is part of a smuggling syndicate containing people from Indonesia and Afghanistan. He received $2,500 to organize plane tickets, hotels and the boat. We recorded a phone conversation with his boss from Afghanistan, talking fluent Indonesian, discussing the next shipment. More than 50 people are usually involved in a people smuggling operation, he tells us. We always monitor the situation. If the situation is not safe, we know we can't depart from a certain location. So for every departure we arrange four or five different locations to mislead the police. We also prepare different places to hide and several boats we can use. We can change our plan at the last minute if necessary. Most of the smugglers that have been caught have received minor punishments, since Indonesia has no laws against people smuggling, even though the government says it does want to impose harsher sentences using other laws and try harder to convince people to refrain from this business. This is real, strictly the issue of law enforcement. We will we try to educate our people. They engage in unlawful activities. So uh, this is ongoing process. Some admit they feel troubled, risking the lives of asylum seekers and their children on small boats. They all know not everyone arrives safely. Step Fasten, Al Jazeera, West Timor.